Today is a very exciting day. Today is the grad student and postdoctoral symposium and both Nojit and I are presenting our podium presentations. It starts at 8.30, it is 8.20 now and Noji is one of the first to present so I'm gonna go up and wish her luck. Lucas is also presenting his poster presentation too. So it's super exciting. Basically like the grad student and, grad student and postdoc symposium happens every year and this is just when we all get to share our results and our research with one another so it's pretty cool. Let's go see no dude! Great. There's only one person allowed in the office, so Noju's gonna use it because her presentation is first. But I'm going to find a space in the lab to sit and join this symposium. Oh my god, these presentations are so freaking short, and we see the timer too, so it's very stressful. <laughs> I'm just watching these and I'm already stressed. Oh my god, it was all actually less severe than actually responsible. Okay, no, Jude so is coming up go, next. I'm so excited. Now with that, I would like to thank my PI or, and all lab members and thank you for your attention. She has so many questions. Um, it's so good. I think she it's did so well. Here. That was wonderful. I'm so proud of you, Okay, it's break time now, so gonna go upstairs and get ready. Oh my god. I'm in my office now. It is 9.26. The session will begin again at 9.30. My time is at we've like probably 9.37-ish now. Very, very nervous. But I think this is like a lot less nerve-wracking than doing it in person for sure. But dang, people are still asking Noju questions. So Noju did so well. Oh my god, I'm so proud of her. Okay, I'll check back in with you after I do this. I have to turn on my camera soon. Uh, so today I'm going to be telling you a story about this red drug here um, that has very limited clinical application due to its poor aqueous solubility. I'm going to share with you the strategy that we took to improve the delivery, share some preclinical data that highlights its potential for clinical application. So this red drug that I'm talking about is called gambogic acid and it is an anti-cancer drug that is really poorly water soluble so it does not like water. Our idea was to introduce it to PEG which I represent here in blue. Uh, PEG is a water loving polymer called polyethylene glycol. The method that we use to link these two together is click chemistry. Click chemistry is very nice to use because all you need to do to join two things together is introduce an azide group and an alkyne group. And with the help of a copper catalyst, a, it really uh, easily joins these two together to form a prodrug. And a prodrug is, you can think of it just as a modified drug. And the one thing that I want you to remember about this prodrug is that it has both a water-hating end, which is gambogic acid, and a water-loving end, which I said before is PEG. And the reason why this is important to remember is because when these conjugates are introduced to aqueous media, they naturally self-assemble to form nanoparticles. And another way to represent this nanoparticle is here. So the drug is in red and you can see it is protected in the core. And what we want to study about this nanoparticle are two things. One is the PEG molecular weight. So whether it is short or long. Uh, so 2000 means that it is short and 5000 means that it is long. So you can imagine 2000 there's less of this navy blue and 5000 there is more of it. And then we want to study uh, the effect of change in the linker. So the bond that links the drug to PEG. And so the four formulations that we studied are shown here in four different colors. And this is just a plot with the y-axis being concentration and x-axis being time when we give these formulations to mice. So the first thing that really stands out is that 2000 ester, which is an orange, is really quickly cleared. And this makes sense because the ester bond is more easily cleavable than the amide bond. So that once the drug is cleaved, it will get cleared and not detected. 
But what's not so obvious when you first look at it is that the 5000 ester, which is in black, doesn't have a very different kinetic profile. A pharmacokinetic profile compared to the amides but this makes sense when you think about it further because 5000 ester has a longer peg length therefore um, the linker is just harder to get to and it's harder to cleave so now I'm going to share with you something really exciting because I'm currently like really living this and this is when we're going to this is we're testing the four formulations on a tumor model so what we do is uh, we give the tumors subcutaneously to mice and we wait about a week before the tumors start to develop. Once the tumor is palpable, we measure the tumor every single day and monitor the size. This is the graph that we get. So right now I'm literally on day five and it's starting to separate. So the y-axis is the relative tumor volume and the x-axis is the days post-treatment. Two things that I want you to see is that in yellow, the esters are much better at keeping the tumor volume low compared to the amides, which are in blue. And then if you zoom even and then if you zoom in even further, you'll see that the 5,000 ester is better than 2,000 and 5,000 amide is better than 2,000 amide. So this just shows that 5,000 ester out of the four formulations is the best at suppressing tumor volume. And we think that this is because 5,000 ester has more PEG, therefore it has um, more better circulation. And also it's, easy, it's more easily cleaved, therefore there's more drug that is accessible. So in conclusion, uh, we use click chemistry to modify gambogic acid, test different linkers being amide and ester bond, and different peg lengths being 2000 and 5000, and we showed that these two factors have a significant role in the resulting nanoparticles, its pharmacokinetics, and its anti-tumor efficacy. Uh, with that, I would like to thank everyone in our lab, and thank you for listening. Um, I'll take any questions now. There's a break now, so I'm gonna go down and hang out with Noju. Today, I forgot to mention, today is Noju's last day. Tomorrow she's going back to Saudi Arabia for like a month, and then she's gonna quarantine for two weeks when she gets back, so I won't see her until freaking June? No, July. Almost July, oh my god. Oh. So I'm gonna go down and see her and uh, the rest of this seminar symposium thingy. It's so exciting, it's so exciting. Hello! Hello. <laughs> I just told the vlog that you're leaving and, you're, and I'm not gonna see you, so don't lie. How do you feel? Uh, I just got my COVID test. Yeah. And it's negative. How the heck would you get COVID? You're vaccinated and you don't leave anywhere besides the lab in the house. Yeah. But yeah, how do you feel after presenting? Excited. Oh, no. Excited to go home, <laughs> not after presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Commemorate your last day in the lab before you fly and ditch me forever. <laughs> We're waiting for Lucas to start his poster presentation. He looks so interested right now. <laughs> Hello, happy Saturday. I have not been doing any lab work for the past, I don't even know, a week, two weeks. It's just been preparing for conferences, presentations, revisions for that freaking review that I thought I would have submitted by now, and animal work. Today I'm just coming in to check on my mice as per usual. So no dude left. For Saudi, she gave me her brand new cold foods that are gonna go bad if she leaves them. So I'm gonna go pick that up. I forgot to get that on Friday. But I also wanted to share with you something very exciting that I'm kind of nervous about, but also very excited about. So one sec, let me go get that stuff and then we'll talk. I'm in the grad lounge. I don't know if I, I, yeah, I don't think I have ever filmed in here because there's always people in here, but this is the grad lounge. I guess I'll give you a tour since we're here. This is like the microwave area. 
there was like this coffee club and you can get your own coffee but we're not doing that anymore because covid and safety and stuff um limited number of people can sit here and eat but before covid this was like the best place to be at lunch because everyone came here to eat there's a snack station which is super cute you put down your name and like what you took if you paid it or not and then you put the money in there <laughs> this is awesome i think yeah oh shoot i owe a dollar so uh <laughs> i need to pay that couch area there's a tv and bulletin board thingy my bobber calendar foosball table this was so much fun and we have a plant so cute we see when we need to water it here very very precise measurements of 50 milliliters of water this is so cute this is a new addition okay so very briefly before i go down and check my mice this might be a situation where uh, the camera falls down again let's see so you're balancing on a couch <laughs> I am going to run a marathon on September 25th. That's the date that I've decided by myself. Actually, Louis said he's going to run it with me without training. So we will see if he actually falls through with that. <laughs> Louis, this is live now. I have shared with the good people of YouTube that you have said that you're going to run this marathon with me without training. I'm going to make a fundraising event out of this marathon. So I've done a couple marathons before and they were all just for good fun and like for races and such. This time I, I didn't sign up for any virtual event and obviously we're not able to do any races right now but what I want to do is I want to fundraise $422 so $10 for every kilometer that I will try to run. Every single dollar that I get out of this fundraising event will go directly to this charity that i'm really passionate about which is called the society for canadian women in science and technology i really stand for everything that they're doing they are advocating and providing more opportunities for females to pursue careers and education in the stem field so in science technology engineering and math and this is something that i'm really passionate about it's just really cool to see more and more girls be interested in science and in STEM field. I myself am female and I'm really happy to be doing work in science, to be doing research, and I really want more girls to be interested in science. And I'm hoping that I can contribute in like any tiny small way and this is like one way to do that. I already love to run, like this is my favorite season right now, like early spring to run. So I thought I might as well train for a marathon and get people involved with it i think it's gonna be a really cool thing to do i really am looking for more people to take on this marathon with me september 25th you can train by yourself with me so we'll train together virtually apart and we can run this thing together that would be super cool if you're actually interested in running the marathon with me on september 25th please let me know i mean it's great to have louis but uh he's not training for it and i'm not in entirely sure we'll see how that goes i'm gonna try to incorporate little bits and pieces of my process and like my training into my weekly vlogs because running is a big part of my life running has really helped me stay sane during grad school it has been my alone time to listen to audibles and podcasts and and just really challenge myself so it's a perfect combination to run a marathon get you involved in donating and running and cheering and participating however you want to get involved it'll all be for a good cause the stem field can only benefit with more girls in it that's what i wanted to share with you i'll keep you updated on my running today i did my first long run which is that was it was a 13 kilometer run so then that concludes my very first week of uh, marathon training i'm going to train for 16 weeks probably longer than 16 weeks from the first week of may to the last week of september so that's what i wanted to share and i will link all the info and where you can donate in the description box and yeah ten dollars per kilometer i think that's quite reasonable if every one of my friends can donate ten dollars i don't know how many friends I should at least have like five friends that can donate $10, right? I'm not gonna set that. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Friends, if you don't wanna donate $10, you can just like this video and wish me luck on my training and the marathon. But you'll hear about this for the next four months, so let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna go down and check on my mice. 
but I will talk to you later. Bye.